Okay, guys. I'm going to give you guys a really quick and, uh, I don't know, sort of impromptu uh, explanation of why this cheap MS390 or 039 cylinder setup sucks. First off, we're going to check the squish. Okay, so it is hitting, but barely. Uh, I, there's no flywheel or anything on here. I'm just able to spin the crankshaft by hand. There are no rings on the piston. That's why, um, that's why it's turning so freely. Okay, so we're looking at a squish of about 63 thousandths of an inch. 63 thousandths of an inch on the squish. All right, now let's time it. I should, oh, it should still hold the memory. I've already done this. I mean, make sure here. 70, yep, we're good. All right, so intake timing. What's that say? It's, it's it's moving so freely. Now now this is a first for me, so th so that you know, I've never seen a cylinder move more freely than this one does, and that tells me the tolerances on the piston to cylinder walls are too loose. It's it's trash. They never move this freely. N uh, never. I mean, it's just... Anyways, so it's hard for me to hold it where it needs to be, which is right there. 78.4 on the intake. That's perfect. But we'll get down to more nitty-gritty on that. Right there for the exhaust. We're about 96 degrees on the exhaust. Yeah, about 96, something like that. It's hard to hold it steady. I can't. I can't hold it steady. It keeps. It keeps wanting to rotate on me. I've. I've never seen something that bad. So um, we got 78 on the intake, which is about spot on, perfect, really. For especially for just a firewood build, 96 on the exhaust, which is way too high, especially whenever you've only got what was it? You, you you've got a squish reading of 63 thousandths of an inch, so that means we're not going to have very good compression at all. Um, and then finally, your transfers. About 124. That's about, and that's not bad on the transfers at all. It's not, it's not bad at all. Um, so that's with the pop-up piston in there, and um, it, it it's just not going to have nearly enough compression to do anything. So even if I was to machine this down, we're, we're going to have all kinds of problems all sorts of problems. So I would have to machine this down the base would have to come down 40 thousandths of an inch just to get my squish right. Well, I would want to go down further than that, right? Because the com combustion chamber is pretty big in this. It's not a little teeny tiny uh, nice, neat, and tidy combustion chamber. So we got to make that smaller, which means instead of 40 thousandths off this base, I'd probably have to take about 100 thousandths off of this base so that I could then cut 40 thousandths out of the chamber. I think I might be right on the math on this. And then 
fingers crossed, the 96 degree exhaust roof would be up around 100 ish uh, or more. And hopefully we'd have something to work with. But the intake would be so low then, we'd probably be at like 84 on our intake, 85 on our intake. And told you I'd come back to the intake. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, you can kind of see it. Let me get on up here. Look at that horrible big step right there. So you would want to get rid of that horrible big step that's on the bottom of the intake floor. You'd want to get rid of that. But if you did, you'd go from 84 on your intake to like 90. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I've had, I've had good luck with cheap cylinders before, you know? Um, pretty good luck. They're, they're not, not bad, you know, um, most of the time. But on this setup right here, those are the worst numbers that I've ever seen from a out of the box cylinder. That That's terrible. You can't do anything with it. And this is all on a cylinder that is a clamshell, which means machine work is not impossible, but not worth doing. It's, it's so bad. And it really, uh, you know, I, I want to, you know, most of these things are all just the same. The only, the only difference is uh, quality, right? The, the, the setup of the cylinder for, for most of these uh, Chinese made, uh, Taiwanese made, I don't care where it's made, aftermarket cylinders, they're all using the same molds. And so it's more likely that you're going to get the exact same numbers. The difference will be all the burrs will be taken off. It'll have a better finish inside the cylinder, things like that. Uh, it might be made with a higher um, grade of alloy, uh, things of that nature. Um, but the numbers probably going to be about the same. Uh, everybody, and it really makes me wonder, you know, what's, a highway cylinder running for an 039 uh, number wise. Well, what's a, a Duke cylinder running uh, number wise? I mean, I don't care enough to find out. I mean, I can say pretty exclusively, I'll never build another one of these 290 or 390 um, setups. But let's go ahead and throw the 290 setup on here and see what kind of numbers it puts out. Okay, we are back. This is the stock 290 cylinder. So let's see what we got here. The intake timing is going to be Seventy nine point three. That is a lot of intake timing. Wow. Seventy nine point three. Um, and so now the exhaust. One oh two. One oh two. And the transfer is very hard to see, but yeah, right there. There we go. Went right to it. 120. No wonder this thing ran so damn good. If I was porting it, that'd be the numbers that I would pick. <laughs> 102 on the exhaust. Um, uh, 79 on the intake. What? Come on. That's perfect. Then 120 on the transfers. Holy for Jesus, that's really good numbers. So no wonder it ran so damn good once I unclogged it. Um, oh, let's check the squishings. Now I have a feeling that on this, we're not going to be able to roll it through with our finger, just our finger. <clears throat> and we are not. Maybe this will help. 
Yep, I got it through. But it just barely caught. Good enough for now. We're looking at, oh, it's still a lot. Looking about 48 thousandths. Let's do this. On the squish. I want to make sure I get this right. I brought the flywheel so that I could use it to turn the engine over. Yeah. Got it. It's do a second reading here. Yeah, about forty four thousand. So it still needs machine work. But no wonder it ran so good from the factory once we unplugged it. Dukes doesn't make a uh, pop-up piston for this. And I can't think of a piston that I could adapt to this, you know, that would, or to the... There might be something I could adapt to this, 47 millimeter. Let's look into that. That was 46 millimeter. Hmm. Oh. A Husky 55 piston. Let's see if it works. Take this ring off of it. This thing is very well worn. No, that's even worse. This is that 390 piston, and that's going to be the same height as this. No. The Husqvarna 55 piston is even shorter. But you know what might work is a super. No, it won't work either because your intake's already close to where it needs to be. And that super, the intake, uh, the, the, the skirt on the piston is way high. So, yeah. All right. That won't work. The 028 Super Piston won't work either because the skirt is going to be super high. I was hoping there for a second, but no. That's not going to work. Dang. That close. Anybody out there got a uh, cylinder? For a 390 or 039. If it's cheap, I might buy it. You know, let me know. Hit me up in the comments. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I just may call it quits on this whole chain. This this saw. You know, sad really. Ran good with the uh, stock cylinder. I mean, not great, just totally reasonable, you know. Hmm. Anyways, that's enough for this video. If you got a 390 cylinder or 039 OEM cylinder that could be cleaned up and used, 
Let me know. I might, I don't know, I might be interested. There's one on eBay. The damn guy wants $180 for it. <laughs> I'm thinking more along the lines of 40 bucks. So if you ain't got that, then, you know, uh, to hell with the whole project, you know?